Welcome to another edition of Trending Worth Recommending. I'm your host, Corey, and today we're going to tackle glue and corsages. So first, I'm going to take some of the glue and I'm going to take a clear sheet of cellophane and I'm just going to put a mound of glue onto the cellophane. And then we'll put the cap back on so that way our glue doesn't dry out. Now we do this because this allows the glue to get a little bit tacky, which is going to really shorten our drying time. So that way you can get these done a lot faster. What I start with is I take your wristlet and then you're going to just fold in the flaps. Since we're not using wire, these are not necessary. And if you just fold them in, it doesn't leave them sharp so they don't cut you know, your wrist while you're wearing it. Okay. So once you get them folded in, I start gluing the leaves down. So basically, I'm just going to take the leaf and we're going to snip off the stem. Okay, so once you have your little leaf, you're just gonna dip it in the glue and you might have to just dip it in a little bit deeper because once the glue starts to get tacky, you gotta break that little bit of a seal. And then you're just going to press it on like so. Another tip I like to use is to go to the hardware store and get a two by three. They come about eight feet long and they'll cut it down to a foot there, which is about this length here. I usually leave a couple at the foot length. That way you can do multiple corsages at the same time, especially if they're the same. Keeps it a lot easier for you. And then I like to cut the rest down to like about a four inch size. This way, while you have your wristband on it, it keeps it flat, it stops it from moving around, and it also just gives you a nice raised surface so that way you don't have to worry about damaging the flowers. Okay, so now that we have our sample little leaf palette, we are going to start with our bow. I usually like to start with the bow first in the center, um, I use ribbon, sometimes I'll use um, tool. This is like a sparkle tool, so it's going to give you a little bit more of a shine than your, your traditional tool would. So I'm going to take the bow, and I'm going to fold up all the loops. So that way I get this nice flat bottom. I make sure my wire is tucked up nice and neat, so that way it doesn't stick straight down. I'm just going to take the bottom of the bow and dip it right in the glue here and make sure I get it nice and covered like that. Then I'm going to take my bow and stick it right in the center of your leaf palette. So once your bow is adhered to your leaves, we're going to go ahead and start with our base. For my base, I'm just going to use a little bit of plumosa. This way it's going to give it a fun little texture on top of the ivy leaves, but it's not really going to create a powerful backdrop. So we're going to get just a couple pieces here. And I'm just going to take the tip of the plumosa and I'm just going to dip it into the glue. Now another thing to remember with this is to not use a lot of glue. The more glue you have, the more it's going to seep out and it's just going to get messy and when it dries it's not going to be too attractive. It also, it cuts down on weight the less glue you use. So we try to keep it as light as possible because it gets really uncomfortable to wear this off for a long period of time. So next I'm going to lay my filler flower. Um, a lot of the times I wind up having to use baby's breath or solidago if they want a bright yellow or I love, absolutely love wax flower for this. It just gives you that tiny little happy pop of color. So we're just going to, you know, glue a few of these on. Okay, and then we're also going to hit the other side as well. So next, I'm going to take my roses. So I'm just going to pop the heads off. Today we're going to use some yellow. The, these are the yellow babe. They opened up really nice and full. So they're going to give us a really big pop of color and have a lot of character to them. So first, we're just going to take the bottom of the rose and then we're going to dip it right down into the glue. So that way we have a nice full coverage. And if you do get those little glue strings, don't worry, they do pop right off. We're going to just take the rose and glue it right down close to the center. I usually like to work from the center out. That way you can get the bulk into the center and then make it thinner towards the ends. Once again, we're going to take it. We're going to cut right at the calyx. 
and then we're gonna take the rose and dip it into the glue again. Now on this one, I'm gonna put a little bit of a rhinestone. So we have all different things you can use. There's rhinestones, there's leaves, um, there's these little fun leaves, there's also feathers, all the different things you can use to kind of accent and make it a little bit more popping. So I'm just gonna take this and trim the wire short. Since we're not wiring, we don't need this long wire to stick out. So I cut it nice and short. That way, we can just dip it right into the glue and adhere it to the corsage. And then we'll take it and stick it right underneath this rose as well. Now I know some people out there like to use hot glue for this. I prefer not to use like a pan melt glue or hot glue only because when you put it in the cooler, the temperature change is gonna make all your flowers pop off. So I really recommend using something like the Oasis glue. That's gonna really give you a nice stick. And now I'm gonna come up right underneath the rhinestones again and tuck this rose in right here. Now the nice thing about gluing is you can stick the flowers wherever you would like them. It's not like back in the day when you would wire it and if something wasn't sitting right, you'd have to take it apart. So you can twist it, turn it, play with it, see whatever way you like it to get it to sit. All right, and now that we got our flowers in, I'm gonna just go ahead and tuck in a little bit more filler just to fill in some of the holes as well as to just bring out some of the color and make it even. And you know, the nice thing about gluing corsages, you can get a lot of your prep work done in advance. So rather than, you know, a couple days, like two days before the prom, having to hurry and rush to get all these orders done, you can get your bases and all your bows done in advance and just have them ready on the side. So that way when you're ready to make your corsages and assemble them, all you have to do is just pull out all your necessities and you're good to go. All right, now once you have all your flowers in, usually it's recommended you wait about 10 to 15 minutes before you go ahead and apply something like a crowning glory or spray them down with water, just so you can let the glue set a little bit before you introduce a, like, you know, a wet mixture on top. I'm a big fan of making all my bows in advance. So I used to go through my orders and see how many silver I'd have, how many iridescent, pink, red, whatever. I make all my bows in advance and then make a few extra. That way I don't have to waste the time of making these as I'm going. So it really does cut down on, you know, the hurt on your fingers, as well as the time it takes to make each corsage. So another great tip about gluing is if a girl isn't too keen on flowers, you can make a flowerless corsage. So you can get yourself some fun wire, like this is our diamond wire. Um, you can just curl it into fun curly cues, put a few silver or, you know, any other color leaf in the back, and you're just gonna glue them down Put another like little curly cue in the center. You can put brooches, really any type of fun little accent in the center. And there you have it. We have all different types of fun applications that you can use to make this year's prom season a successful one.